I'm Mr. Thompson. We're here in my classroom and today we're going to try to take just a few minutes to talk about everything you ever wanted to know about maps. 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 So maps generally, even though I'm pointing to this globe back here, maps are typically a 2D representation of a three-dimensional portion of our world. Whether we are looking at a map of a state, a country, or the entire world, we are trying to take the world around us and put it into data that can be reflected on a flat surface. Now the larger the area you're looking at, in particular the entire Earth, this can cause certain problems which we are going to get into in just a moment. But first we want to recognize and understand that there are three basic types of maps that we are going to look at. When you are looking at a map it is either going to be a physical map, a political map, or a thematic map. Now a physical map looks at the physical world. It is what you would look at if you want to understand what the physical features in an area are. Sometimes maybe you're looking at elevation, maybe you are looking at uh, the forest and dry desert areas, but you're looking at the natural landscape of an area. A political map is a map that looks at political boundaries, whether they are uh, borders for countries, whether you are looking at borders for states within a country, you could be looking at uh, county borders within a state itself. Maybe you're looking at the boundaries of a school district. Those would all be considered political maps, looking at arbitrary man-made political boundaries within a geographic area. Now our third type, thematic maps, can encompass really any way in which you are utilizing a map to represent data that is not in a political or physical sense. So there are lots of ways that a map, just like a graph, a chart, um, a scatter plot uh, diagram, a map is a tool that can also be used to uh, demonstrate and visualize lots of types of information and data. And thematic maps uh, often do that. And there are so many types that have their own specific names. Uh, we can look at just a few examples of them here but thematic maps make up really just any other way we maybe would use a map to look at something in a physical uh, geographic area or region. Now when it comes to maps, they are looking at our world which is round, it spins. So when you are looking at an entire world map, we're trying to take a round spherical object and translate it into a flat surface. Imagine if you took an orange took the peel off an orange and now you had to lay that out flat and um, put it on a square surface. It's going to be pretty difficult. Because of that we have several different what we would call projections of maps. These are different ways that we have tried to take um, the world and put it onto a flat surface. Now each of these maps have their own kind of unique benefits but also problems. For instance the Mercator projection uh, takes our world and puts it in a flat surface where the longitude lines go straight up and down and all the latitude lines go side to side. It makes a perfect square map. This is supposed to be easier for navigation. Unfortunately, the major problems with it is that it greatly distorts the size of things in our world. Greenland becomes an enormous landmass and everything else in the northern part of our world and everything in the central portion, particularly uh, Central America and Africa, become much smaller than they actually are. If you're looking at a Mercator map, you are not looking at a fair representation of size when it comes to geographic areas. Understanding this problem, lots of different types of projections have come out uh, over time to try to correct this, to try to make a map that not only represents visually what our world looks like, but also is still usable on a flat surface. Some maps that try to completely represent our world exactly as it is on a flat surface become so convoluted that they're almost unusable. So we need to make some compromises when it comes to putting a map on a flat surface and 
using one that actually works. Now amidst all these different types of projections that try to make a good world map, this example here, the Winkle triple projection, I believe I'm saying that right, but the Winkle triple projection here has been kind of the greatest compromise that even National Geographic Society um, has utilized since 1998 as kind of the standard uh, world map when we are looking at our world on a flat surface. Now when you are looking for a map there's a lot of things you can take a look for to make sure that it's a reliable map that you are looking at that's going to have relevant data that is um, what you might be looking for. So first off always look for a title at the top of the map. The title is typically going to let you know what it is you're looking at and where in the world you're looking at. Often if a map is zoomed in into a specific area, there should be somewhere on the map a little projection showing what part of the world or what part of a country you're looking at. Be on the lookout for uh, a key that tells you what all the different symbols on a map mean. Uh, there should be some kind of line showing scale. For every little inch that you move on a map, how many miles does that represent in the real world? If your map is showing data, so if your map is showing you um, what people call soft drinks around the world, uh, where is that data coming from? Does it have a reference at the bottom to tell you where this information is coming from? Are they just making it up or can they back it up uh, with actual data? Look for the directions. Is north actually at the top of your map? North does not need to be at the top of the map. So make sure you see a compass somewhere to let you know the orientation that you are looking at your map on. Um, look for the lines of latitude and the lines of longitude on your map. These are going to be the great tools to utilize to find exact location. Latitude lines going side to side measure how far north and how far south you are from the equator, while lines of longitude go up and down between the North Pole and the South Pole. But longitude lines measure how far east and how far west you are from the prime meridian. Uh, these lines really should be on almost every map you're looking at, uh, particularly where location is going to be important. So if you pay attention to some of those specific details and the specific things that are on a map, anytime you look at it, you can very quickly assess the purpose of the map, when was the map made. If you're looking at a map of the world and there's a giant country called the USSR, you might want to update your map. If you're looking at Africa and there's a giant country called Sudan with no South Sudan underneath it, it's time to update your map. In fact, in the last couple of years, uh, we have been getting new countries, new names. Uh, I believe the most recent one that I remember looking at was Swaziland down in South Africa within the country of South Africa has changed its name to um, uh, indigenous language for Swaziland or the Swazi people. So things are always updating and if your map is not current, the data you're looking at might not be as helpful as you are thinking. So make sure you're looking for those details on a map and you're going to know that what you're looking at is reliable, is useful, and you're going to be able to get something out of it. So coming here to the end, I don't want to go too long on any of these points, but you could really get you could really go into a lot of details on anything surrounding different types of maps, map projections, the way we look at the world, the way we utilize maps, the different type of data you can use a map for. Okay, the globe went away. It was distracting me a little bit. The point is maps are incredible tools that we have to not only project physical locations, but to also uh, visually represent data and information. And there is almost no limit to how we can use them. So remember, when you are looking at a map, you're looking probably at a 2D representation of our three-dimensional world. And make sure you're looking at all those different map pieces to know what you're looking at, why you're looking at it, and is it accurate. So keep using those maps, everybody. We're obviously going to use them in class from time to time. Have a great one. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. If you want to see uh, geography humor at its finest. But 